Well, this is Dr. Murphy. I am back. I had said early on it was part two when I talked about in the very beginning when I talked about kingdom servant and leader versus hireling. But I want to jump right into this message that I did call part two, but it's actually not a part two. It's just more of a revelation of some things that we need to consider. Okay, and I still want to give my disclaimer that I'm not arrived at 100, but I have been in a lot of situations in times past. Uh, you know, being one that has been an international speaker over the years and traveling, and especially my first call, and we all should be called as an evangelist. Uh, I was an ordained, licensed and ordained evangelist, uh, but my calling at this point as an apostle, I believe as a leader's midwife, I believe that I should be shooting straight and just telling it like it is so that we can kind of look at some of these things so that we can be asking God to help us to understand where are we deficient, you know, what we need to be getting straight for ourselves. So without further ado, I want to try to begin by kind of giving uh, what the difference is. And I did say that I was thinking about doing this as a video so that when I say video, meaning that where people can actually see me sharing the documents. But uh, if you're interested in the document, just get a hold of me, and I'll be happy to give you a sample of what you should consider because um, they come in different forms. I've seen a lot of things, you know, being one that's brought in, high-profile leadership uh, through my ministry before. There's a lot of different types of documents that I have used in times past where, you know, as far as giving my service type of um, trying to find out what their special needs are before that person even gets to me is very important. And so those accommodations need to be considered when you bring in somebody in. What are you going to be doing? How are you going to be meeting their needs to make sure you give service excellence? Well, as I began to really study and watch how different ministries you know, handled leaders when they came in or watch how those different teams were handling me when I came in to speak or to present a service for a ministry because this is what I'm focusing on right now, uh, composing and signing ministry service agreements and versus contracts. And the most important that part of this message I really want to bring out is the service communications, you know, and then hopefully the document composition as I'm going to share a little brief about that in this particular message, that you would take some considerations uh, about making sure you communicate what that service is before you sign anything or before you even go out to serve. Because I believe a lot of bridges and ministries have been created in times past, uh, not by me, but over the years I've seen things happen. And because for the love of people and for me to learn how to pray and not uh, uncover people nakedness and ignorance, I believe that it's important that um, someone make sure that they ring the alarm or try to do what we should do, and that is iron sharpen iron and bring people up in other, in other dimensions to understand what is missing and what we should be doing as servants, as those who are going out to preach the gospel and to present in excellence and in holiness. And so what is the difference then, Dr. Murphy, between a contract versus a service agreement, okay? Well, first of all, if you Google this, you'll find the information just as I did because I want to make sure I kind of bring it to you straight uh, so you can look it up yourself. But when I talk about servanthood, uh, early on in my message, uh, when I talk about kingdom servant leader versus hireling, you know, I was trying to make sure that we understand throughout the New Testament the word bond servant is applied to someone who is absolutely devoted to serve the Lord, okay, first. And this is how we can distinguish on are we going to serve for money or are we going to serve in an agreement that I'm here to give a service and that you can't buy me, you can't give a dollar to get me to be hired to display godliness and to deliver the word, okay? This is the part that I wanted to bring out in this message, how important it is that we don't try to sell the gospel. And this is where the hireling mentality come in when we start to uh, write and or sign off on different type 
of service agreements or contracts that we call kingdom business. So then what is that difference then, uh, Dr. Murphy? Well, a contract of service is an agreement between if we know that it's an employer. But in this particular message, we're talking about uh, a leader or an organization, a ministry, okay? So these people is bringing you to do a service, but because it's like the word employer, then now we're being employed or we're being hired is where the hiring comes in at to do a service is what we want to call it. But in a contract for service, this means now you're becoming an independent contractor, that you're self-employed, you are a vendor, whether you have books or whatever, and even if you're just a speaker, you are now a vendor or you're a contractor that could be considered in the natural as well as in the spirit because I have done and still do uh, work for different other secular uh, entities, whether they're schools, colleges, uh, or other organizations such as, you know, people that have businesses or corporations for me to come out and speak on different topics or whatever. So now we are entering into a service contract or a vendor contract, okay? And so now we're engaged where now we're talking about fees. We're talking about what is it going to be for me to be able to carry out this particular service or this particular vendor type of project or assignment that you want me to do in terms of working, in terms of uh, I do this and you give me that. But we have taken these uh, communications of ministry and shifted them into secular mode where we are operating to provide kingdom servant uh, type of ministry into a more of a secular type of service that now it is more hireling type of focus than it is ministry delivery of the word. And so I, I, I don't want to get into too much if you want to call me dogmatic or whatever you want to call it, because I'm definitely not getting into all of that. But my main thing is for us to look at how we have allowed ourselves to get into that. I'll tell a quick testimony, and I'll get into some of the elements in a few minutes about the contract and how important it is that we love Daddy more than anything else. And as I said in the last message, how uh, 1 Timothy 5 and 18 tells us, for the scripture says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treaded out the corn, and the labor is worthy of his reward. Very true. But I believe that Daddy is going to bless us, and we're going to be blessed tremendously beyond money than we can even think. And I, don't, and I know that we are worthy of that. We should be given uh, wages. We should not have to ask. That's the key right there common sense would say that you know that you should not tread on this, that you should not play with this anointing, that you should not just have someone come and labor, that you should give, you should offer. And these things should already be considered without the person even saying, well, I need a thousand. And this is where Sandy Murphy used to be because I was looking at all the others, Joyce Meyer. I'm just calling out a couple of names because I watched these people as I asked several of these different ones to be speakers for me, you know, Paula White and wanting to bind them. And I'm calling these names out not to dis, you know, discredit them or take, take away what they believe is kingdom-minded way of handling business. I'm telling you what I know that it is not scripture. I believe that if we're going to give ourselves an agreement to do a service, then I believe that common sense will say that the person who is having a service should know how to handle kingdom business and stewards of kingdom uh, business, then we don't have to be wondering how are we going to uh, bless this person that we're going to make sure that we're giving that labor the worthiness of the reward of the service, okay? Because uh, I believe that in this particular time that we're in, when we're laboring for the Lord, we should not be uh, given the example that many of the kids are coming up thinking there's some type of a uh, type of a job that they can get to preach real good and do things like that and look real uh, intellectual, that if I do this and play the organ real, real well, then this is now has shifted my talent into a hiring talent, talent you know, rather than uh, just gone on say my talent is for hire, you know, rather than calling it a ministry. This is the thing right here. 
I believe that we really need to look at the fine line here so that we can make sure that we don't find ourselves in this hiring mode is what this message is about because we have too many who are watching us, too many who won't even play the organ until you give them their check or they won't even come to church uh, until they can make sure you owe them for the last week because you didn't take up enough money that week before. Uh, you know, so that means now these people who are hirelings and not are there to minister and that the Lord will in turn bless them. And I understand people use people and pimp people out, but we need to make sure that we're looking at what we are doing for those who are coming into our services that we say that is kingdom ministry. Very, very important so that we won't be the one and then they don't be put in a position to become hirelings because of the way we approached it in the very beginning when we maybe miscommunicated the service uh, responsibility or expectation. Very, very important. And so when we look at that, I want to kind of share of what I was going to say about Sandy Murphy. When I was out there looking at all of them, as I said earlier on, uh, traveling internationally with my ministry and watched how people were telling me, well, I need a jet. Uh, and one of those was Paula White. I never won't forget that, that she was telling me how much I had to pay her, you know, so many thousand dollars to get the, for the pilot and, you know, and this and that. And at that time, my television show was international. And uh, she was saying, because, you know, my show – uh, for this and that, my show, I have to have this amount of money if I'm going to miss or whatever for my show. So, you know, I watched how she talked, and I, of course, I told her, well, listen to me, my show is international, and I, my show is showing on the same channel as yours showing on, uh, letting her know, you know, we're not fixing trying to size each other up here. But what I will say here is simply this. I do not have that kind of money. I'm not fixing to try to go around the Mulberry Bush to try to see if I can collect that kind of money, but I believe if God wanted you here, then it wouldn't be anything, it wouldn't be any question about that, me giving an offering to your ministry, because first of all, I know that I have to be able to make sure that, you know, to take care of the laborer that's coming to serve. When you're telling me i got to take care of the pilot and all these things, why you need to come in your person's jet anyway? Why you can't just get on the airplane? I, I'm just giving an example here. Now, one of the things that I learned from that was to pick up that same type of mentality, and that was not good. That's what I'm trying to show in this message today, what we are sending messages of those things that appear to be godly, but they are not. And people are picking it up to look like it's some type of glory look or thing that these young people are trying to get into. Uh, learning to say that they're, you know, they're here or that they've arrived or they've already given themselves titles and going from church to church and region to region, proper lying that they're this person or giving themselves titles and degrees. And so with that, this is why the hireling mentality has picked up even greater in the body of Christ. No one is trying to minister without dollar, without greed of some number to deliver the word to the lost and the hurting. And so with that said, I begin to uh, do the same thing. Well, I say, well, if they can do this, so let me calculate here. Well, my house note is almost $3,000 a month. My caddy is almost $2,000 a month. Okay, well, the house insurance, I'll throw that in there too. Uh, so uh, maybe we can get those numbers figured out. Uh, that's what it's going to cost me to come out to speak. Pretty much when I got the number, $10,000 is what I needed for these particulars that I called out just now to come at that particular time to be a speaker for me. It floored me. Uh, I was like, $10,000 for an hour? Okay, for an hour to teach, uh, possibly an hour to minister to those that that God may lead you to minister to, I guess it's God. I'm not trying to talk. I'm just trying to talk about nobody. I'm just trying to just say in the time that we're in, because hirelings are on the loose, a lot of these things are going on that is not of God and that's not even led by God. And so uh, one of the things that I want to say is that I, too, begin to go in that mode, you know, saying this is what I needed. They asked me what was my honorarium. And that's a whole other topic to talk about. But I want to stay right here on this contract situation and service agreement and give you these nuggets and get off of here. 
but this is where I was. So in that communication is thirst, number one, as you begin to prepare for, you know, composing this document, uh, before you even compose the document, you need to com- communicate based on Holy Spirit and based on where you're going. Do not ever write something or sign something that you know does not meet Holy Spirit. Or what I say, servant, you know, servant bond. Uh, I call it Abba's love slave mentality. It means I love God more than anything, than any money or anybody that I'm going to get you to pimp me out or hire me out to do anything. Uh, no, I believe in this last day we need to be ministers of Christ so that God can bless us and bless the lives that we come in contact with without being attached to that type of mentality that we've signed off on or that we have created a document that was not kingdom-minded. It was more money-minded. It was more manly and more hiring minded to appear that we are uh, I guess some type of in this high place that the enemy has been using way too long. And so I said my testimony for where I once was, and thank God for deliverance, that I stopped that. And when I began to write my agreement versus a contract that I was watching what they gave me, uh, so I followed sync in that and began to develop contracts about what I was expecting for my so-called services. Do not want to preach. But as the Lord began to minister me about that, and uh, being one who believed in keeping it real, 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 I cried out and told the Lord, okay, if I have to be in a house that's going to live on me and me not living in, if I have to drive a car that makes me look like I'm blessed and highly favored and I don't know how I'm going to get gas to drive it or pay the insurance to, to make the replace it in case somebody hit me, then I don't want it. You can have it all. And that's exactly what I did. I parked the caddy back on the, on the lot where I got it from. I let the house go. Because I believe if I had to ride around and fly around and sell books and, you know, and do all these things to try to get my bills paid, then I know this is not of God. The Bible clearly said here in Timothy that the laborer is worthy of his reward. And I believe that in my service that I will have my meat and my due season. That means whatever the enemy try to rob me of, then it's a lot of it is going to be my fault because I didn't do my due diligence of my services communication. I don't want to preach. Okay. And so here we are. That communication is going to be in a document because we have people who want to play. We have people who want to pimp. We have people who are liars and cheaters and people who want to use you to be able to flock in people and use you to be able to draw in crowds and have these different what they call, uh, I call them religious uh, revivals when ain't nobody being revived. You know, in healing services, where ain't nobody being hurt, healed. The prophetic uh, encounters, where ain't nobody being prophesied, not to, through God, but prophesied through flesh. And I believe that it may sound hard, what I am saying, but it is real. And we're in a time right now that we got to fight to pull down those different types of principalities that is blinding the eyes of the people, especially those who are saying that they're going out to serve and actually they are in a hiring mode and are signing and writing uh, what is contracts of a hiring and not giving service agreements so that people can be in agreement for what you have communicated that they have a, de- have a desire or need you to do by Holy Spirit. And so, uh, first of all, these requirements that I believe that should be in there, uh, they are going to be based on the way people are led by Holy Spirit to do it, but you want to make sure the Holy Spirit is leading you and not, you know, you need to know where you're going to labor. You should know those that labor among you and that you are going to serve. And so um, these seven required elements of any type of enforceable contract, if you're going to be doing a contract that does not mean that you're a hireling, you need to make sure that if you're doing kingdom services, uh, meaning ministry, that you make sure that your verbiage in there is not on this level that I'm describing here, but it still needs to be in a form in some way 
to have particular elements in there that's going to establish that you are in an agreement, that you are communicating on the same page of why you're going there and why you're led to be there in the first place. And so the first uh, requirement that is enforceable in a contract is an offer. That means an offer is the beginning of that contract. And then the acceptance. That means an offer can be accepted in writing or in person. But in this time that we in, you can discuss it, but you better get it in writing. And then consideration. A consideration is something of value. That means that the parties are contracting to exchange. You remember the word that I talked about that I was said to me for the new year. I'm not prophesying anything to anybody. He gave me a word of wisdom that we're in the hour of change and exchange. And that means that we need to be changing some things in our lives and relationships, and we need to exchange through those changes reciprocally. And so then the next thing is you need to have competency and capacity for what you're going to be doing. Many people are bringing people to do stuff that they do not qualify to do in the spirit, nor neither in the intellectual. They don't even have it. You just have a form of it. And then the mutual consent to do it, the legality of it, and most important, the writing of it. And, then, and out of these, those four elements that are going to make it valid is that the offer part of it, the acceptance part of it, the consideration of it, and the mutuality of the obligation. Uh, and most importantly, you got to make sure that you have the competency and the capacity in these different areas. And if you don't have that written instrument, you got a whole lot of issues that's going to be attacking you uh, up the road that the enemy going to use or try to use if you uh, be spiritually ignorant about it because the people can tell if you've never done business before. Those who have went through our school and to God be the glory, uh, who went through it and took those different elements that I've just described in regards to developing where you are, who you are in the spirit, and your anointing to be put in this particular fashion that they're assigned to do before they can graduate. Many of them can attest that it has been a blessing because the people are saying, my God, I mean, you got everything here in order. That is because we need to be in order to make sure people understand, I'm not stupid, I'm not ignorant, this is where I am, this is what I understand, uh, this is what I know that God is leading me to do, and so I'm not here to do this work based on the fact that you are offering me an honorarium. I'm here to do a work because Holy Spirit has this endowed in me to do the work in this region because I believe that if he told you to send me, come get me and request me, I know that I hear God that I'm supposed to be here, not for your money, uh, none of this about me being powerful, Powerful is what daddy is expecting from me in this region. I don't want to preach. But most people sign contracts rather than agreements, and I prefer an agreement. And because that difference of the agreement versus the contract, as I said earlier on, is one that we know that you have agreed to do a work. Okay, you've agreed between the two of you to make sure something take place, and as in mind, that's because if two can't agree, is where I use the scripture. Then why am I doing it? Or if I can't agree, then I need you to give me a table to put my books out. If we can't agree that uh, if people want me to minister to them, uh, you know my anointing. You call me in. You know that I speak in tongues. You know where I'm at. All these things need to be discussed uh, uh, up front. But many of us get uh, breaches between leadership and churches because you never got that, you know, that communication right or you never even had that assessment done by the leader of the church. Instead of you going in there with meeting with both or getting an understanding that this leader and or that first lady know who you are and that they're in agreement and so you're in agreement that you're going to go there to, to provide a ministry service. I didn't say a hiring service. A ministry service. So then uh, many of them will say, well, we're going to send over our contract for those who have been speaking on platforms they call large. Uh, but most of the time they're doing this for legal purposes because people have literally been sued because of things that's taken place. People are still looking for checks in the mail or uh, for whatever. So they build up these types of contracts, okay? And any contract... Uh, that's going to have any valid to it that is legal, it's going to have to contain two particular elements in it, and these particular elements have to be this agreement 
where they've accepted it, and that means that something is of value or exchange, uh, meaning money or service for these goods, okay, uh, that this value of what they were doing was going to be valid, that they can sue if that individual does not come through. Now, it's sad that we have to choose, sue the body, but this has gone on for decades uh, where leaders are being suing one another and things like that, or churches suing other leaders or what have you, churches suing churches, because people don't want to be honorable. They don't want to be right. They want to be greedy. They want to be cunning. They want to be manipulative and just be able to get what they want and keep it moving. It's a sad thing when people agree to raise their own offering or raise up money to get the people to help them pay notes and things like that out of this type of hiring mentality. But off of here, I'm going to go. I think this is enough information for you to get to understand. I'm going to share what I put in mind at the end, uh, and then you can go from there. But you need to get it in writing, you know, even though you talked about it, you know, if it's going to be a contract or anything, even an agreement, what keeps that agreement in order is that you communicated it, and now it is really binded in heaven, okay, and is loosed on earth because you both agreed, you know, because how can two walk together unless they agree? And so you have this oral agreement, you've had this oral discussion, this oral discussion, and so you're enforcing this on earth. Heaven has watched you both agree. And so... But this written agreement is less risky. If you get the oral and don't get it written, it's very important that you have this document that spells out what you are expecting versus what they are expecting, and the obligations will, you know, make you both be very clear. There will be any, there'll be lack of confusion. There will be lack of disagreement, you know. And then the second thing you want to keep is simple, okay, you want to make sure that the things that you're saying in this is going to be very enforceable and going to be righteous and not ridiculous. We got people who want to get rooms for the armor bear and all this kind of stuff like that. You know, I believe that if they're going to come with you and, uh, you know, if that's part of what they agree, not you start getting the room for your armor bear and room for your administrator and all this kind of stuff. You know, let's be real, real, real. Some of this stuff, you know that y'all have been rolling. I can see if y'all want to get a double bid, if you want some time alone, then, you know, why do you need to put them to that expense? Everybody should have a budget to do whatever they want to do. But I think some of this stuff has just really gotten totally ridiculous, and I'm going to tell it like it is. I know I'm not going to go to that ridiculous. I've been doing ministry for almost four, well, more than 40 years, and I've seen some stuff I think that's been really, really abused and, and, and really, really overdone. You know, with they got to have sweets and then they're partying. And I walked in one leader, I ain't calling that name. I just went where I went in and took a look to take some little snacks. And it was wine and alcohol all on the table. And I thought to myself, and you couldn't come preach for me never again. Uh, it was already done. It wasn't nothing I can do. It was there. But this is because when you do our homework, it doesn't matter what the outer or the intellect is. We're looking at the outer appearance, and the intellect don't mean anything. We all are weak and we all are frail. We all got something that we need to repent about. We all got something we need to keep going before God about. That old man that may try to come up at that thing that's so easy to set us that we haven't killed yet. I don't want to preach. We need to keep it simple in this writing. We need to make sure that you have paragraphs that are very clearly Design that's saying what your expectations are, what your agreements are, and you need to deal with the right people. One of the things I find that many people that are going into uh, writing these contracts and our agreements, if that's what you, we're talking about today, but many of you are going into contracts in these what they call high profile or these big platforms or these large conferences where all these high profile people are, be, are, are there, and I've been in those situations before where you're not dealing with the right people. You either don't waste time negotiating or talking to people who are not there. They don't run nothing. They're not even the one who manages or, or, or the steward over the budget or over the situation that uh, they're bringing you in. They're just talking to you because they've been asked to talk to you. They're not the one who are telling you what they are going to do for you or what your expectations are. They can't do anything. They just take your notes, and sometimes this stuff never, ever gets filtered down. So make sure you deal with the right people. If you're not sure who that is, you need to make sure you find out who that is and make sure you operate 
clearly with the pastor or the leader of that ministry. Too often we have people who they're so super busy that they don't have time to talk to you, but they want you there. I will not. I choose not, and I pretty much uh, make sure that I know who I'm talking to before I go anywhere, and I want to make sure I know the leader or the pastor, even if it's a women's conference, I don't, and she's talking, I'm talking to her, I want to make sure that I have been in contact or made some type of reference to make sure that I've connected with that leader or that leader know that I'm coming, you know, because it just doesn't sound good. I don't even really like to go anywhere that I've never been before. If God is even sending me, I like to try my very best to get to know them via video or talk on the phone or something. I've got to be able to connect with who's in charge that God has put, you know, put these, this ministry to their hand. I just, that's just the way I flow. We've got too many people that are going in. The pastor don't even know you're supposed to be there. Then they're doing stuff that's against the, you know, the call of God on that leader's life. They're doing all kind of stuff. Then they're tearing up churches and proper lying and talking hard to the sheep and lying and saying stuff that's not real and saying ugly things that, you know, making the people be fearful and hollering at them, telling them they got demons and all this stuff. And then you, you never got a chance to talk to them. I don't want to freak them anyway. We need to identify each party correctly. Uh, so that we know who's who, because we're doing kingdom ministry, okay? Even though it may be business, we need to make sure that the legal names that you're going to be putting in that document is what you're expecting them to give you an offering for, if that's what you're uh, telling them, whatever they want to give you, then tell them what name to put it in, you know, or if they want to give you a seat, whatever that is, you ain't got no number on that. That's what you're doing kingdom ministry, and you ain't got a dollar on it like a hireling. And so you want to spell that out, the details, okay? In that body of the agreement, you want to spell out all those obligations and details, you know, that you expect room and board or whatever. You know, you need to say that out, all right? You need to specify whatever that is. If it's a contract, then go ahead and specify your obligations and what you expect from them. Because if it's a contract, some of these things are not uh, as spiritual-based as they are carnally, meaning they are secular-based work. And so that's the difference. So, yes, I do spell it out. I say this is what I need for this many people to be in a room with me, for me to be able to present this. Uh, I need, I need, you know, PowerPoint projector. I spell all that out, okay, in my contracts if that's what I'm doing. But in a ministry, somewhat the same. You cannot be demanding these things. You could only ask of these things, and prayerfully they will provide those to be able to give you an effective delivery for your service. But the agreement of the circumstances that terminate uh, the actual agreement or contract, you need to make sure you put that down. You need to put down, uh, you know, what you're going to uh, do to agree on a way to resolve any disputes or anything like that. This is like a contract. Uh, but you want to pick a state uh, that is a statement that governs the laws of that land or that region that you're in because every state is different based on the laws of the land. So you want to make sure that you simplify this to make sure all that is covered so you don't have any type of, you know, things that's going to be lingering later on you in regards to uh, the laws of the land in case things don't go right. And then you want to keep it confidential. You want to make sure that nobody else is in it but you and those who are supposed to be in it and that is the leader and or that particular administrator that's handling that business. Now, let me tell you real quick um, about my service agreement. Those that know that I usually send out a letter, who's ever done ministry meeting, if you listen to this, I send out a letter that is a blanket letter that I usually send out, depending on what's going on in that ministry. One of the things that I do ask at the end uh, I rarely get back, uh, rarely, because some do adhere to what I'm asking, and that is just to know the impact that the ministry had on those that were in the room. Um, and I asked them to get that back to me within a week or two after the service. That's what I asked, if they would agree to that, to just ask for, you know, if it was a blessing, uh, would they just give me a letter on their letterhead stating, you know, the impact the Holy Spirit had in that service. Uh, but like I said, rarely I get that back. Um, that's in my letter, my cover letter. But then on my service agreement, what I'm just telling is that this agreement is between myself 
in that particular church or ministry and the date and everything when I'm going to present there and what I'm presenting. And then I talk about the considerations, you know, that means the services considerations. Now, I'm talking about a service agreement for the ministry. I tell them they can give a love gift as God leads. I make sure I put that in there uh, because I believe that if God led me there, God led that person to ask me to come there, uh, then I know God is definitely not going to let you go against uh, that scripture that I just read to you in regards to making sure that we uh, honor that laborer. You know, he's not going to have you tread on that minister. He's not going to have you go against those principles that we should give that laborer uh, who is worthy of reward. And so, uh, so I just tell them that they can give a ministry love gift uh, as God leads. Um, and then they should make it out payable to myself, or as God leads, depends on where I'm going. He may say this is made out to the ministry of, by me having like three or four different ministries under my 501c3. Uh, the Lord tell me which one it is to make it out to. And then, of course, uh, the room and things like that. I tell them what I can't, you know, deal with. You know, I can't deal with smoke, so I ask for smoke-free room, you know, and uh, you know, and that my main thing, I never mention about my armor bearer. I don't call him armor bearer. I call him my assistant because armor bearer has got a bad name these last days. But uh, we need to make sure that we have people who can be near you and not you constantly turn around and ask some people where they at. I always ask in my agreements if they would please have a seat uh, where they would be sitting close to me or next to me because then I don't have to keep looking for them if I need them to help me do something. I can talk to them directly. Of course, because of my disfigurement and my face, uh, for those who know me, what would happen to my face, I, I do have to have bottled water. And because I drop water out of my mouth, but my mouth not being full uh, as a normal mouth, um, I have to have a squirt bottle. So I ask for that, and I ask for a table for me to display my books. And one of the things I do put in that agreement is that I want the people to encourage them to come to my table, to patronize the table, you know, because we, we make announcements on everything else. And when someone is an author there, I believe that we should acknowledge those books of that person that is serving them because those many times I know my situation – I write books to help my ministry survive because you don't get a lot of places to go to all the time to use your books so that people can be blessed by them. So I make sure that I use those books as my tools to be able or my resources to be able to keep the ministry alive in those areas where I have to do kingdom business to pay for those things that I don't have a nine to five to do. He's given me the gift to write, so I use that gift to be able to keep the ministry alive. I've been doing it over these 40 years. And then, uh, of course, a complimentary copy of any audio or video I ask for uh, for my own personal library because they're going to sell it anyway. So I believe that we should have that understanding or agreement that you would give me a copy of what you're going to be selling that the Lord has put through this voice of Holy Spirit. So I just asked for that, uh, you know, and pretty much that's basically all I asked for. You know, I'm not asking for anything outside of that, you know, that's way and beyond. And I just make sure that the message is said here that it's not binding, uh, that we have an agreement by, between both of us, and that I feel like seven days is enough notice for cancellation if you so that I can rearrange my schedule and then you can do what you need to do unless something uncontrollable arises. I have that in there. And then I just say by signing the agreement that we have agreed on it uh, for these considerations that I've talked about in my agreement request and that these are acceptable. And so I don't write stuff that I don't believe that will be acceptable in the eyes of the Lord based on the scripture that I'm talking here uh, in uh, 1 Timothy 5 and 18 that we should not muzzle the, muzzle the ox and that the labor is worthy of his reward. 
And so what I state at the closing of this agreement is that this agreement is acceptable for God, that his power is released between us as we faithfully agree. And that's very important that I put that word in there, faithfully agree, according to Matthew 18 and 19. For his glory is what I'm saying, the reason why I'm here and serving you, for his glory and kingdom building. And then I put that it's presented on whatever date that I have this agreement uh, composed. And I think that, you know, this is what I do. Many have different ways that they do things, but I believe what's most important is that we remember that we are bond servants, servants of the Lord. That means that we are absolutely devoted to do kingdom ministry to bring glory to God and not to our flesh, and that we don't become hirelings as we're out trying to deliver the word of God without the word being delivered with a dollar amount. Everything should be in the mindset of us being a servant first, okay? So we have the consciousness of that I am a servant. And this begins with us having the mindset that we want to represent Daddy, that we want to be in service excellence, and that we want to make sure that everything that we do is going to be servant-minded first so that we can have the heart of Christ displayed at all times in service excellence, so that we can give that high priority of knowing that we are serving those who have asked to be served by Holy Spirit, that is the fruit of Spirit, that is the character of God through us. God bless you. I pray this has been a blessing to you and that it helps you some. We'll talk soon.